Hello, I'm Linda Seif from The Layered Onion. Thank you for joining us. We will be listening to our amazing creators talk about their art and mental health. 48 million artists all over the world share this lived experience. The Layered Onion was formed to create a supportive community, allowing the creators to focus on their art, bringing their work from the shadows to receive the recognition and opportunities they deserve. Each podcast will feature an artist who talks about their creations and mental wellness. Art is healing. We hope these discussions will inspire you to appreciate the stories behind the creations and more importantly, inspire your inner creator. Together, we can tackle the stigma surrounding mental health. So, Margaret, welcome to the Layered Onion podcast. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us where you're located? Sure. Uh, my name is Margaret Zinni. Um, I am in Auburn, New York. Believe it or not, there's more to New York than just New York City. <laughs> I've had that, you know, people in the South go, oh, you've got orchards and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's a whole state. So um, so that's who I am. That's who I am. Um, Actually, uh, upstate New York is very similar to Wisconsin, where I'm at. Lots of cows and different things. Yeah. So, so maybe you could tell us about your art. What kind of artist are you? Um, I've decided that I'm an abstract person in general, so I do abstract art. Um, it, I, I used to, I I have tried to do more real stuff like animals. And wonder where you put the extra two feet. <laughs> so it, it never comes out the way that I hope it would. So I just said, okay, everything is abstract. Um, but that, that works for me because in my brain, nothing is just, um, just you know, like one dimension. I, I see things differently. I see things broken up. Um, so everything that I do, or majority of everything, uh, is abstract it's it's lots of colors it's lots of different shapes it's uh it's an expression of my brain basically uh that's why I've got had gotten into painting just to be able to you know release everything that's in there well so what do you use watercolor do you use acrylic what kind of um, medium do you use I love acrylic paints they are so forgiving. If you mess up, you let it dry and you paint over the top of it. <laughs> um, that's good. that's what I have to do sometimes. Um, and they're easy to clean up. And I, I've discovered one that's thick body that I really like. Uh, it, it's just the colors are very vibrant. Um, the darks are dark, you know. Um, it's easy to use. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that's all that I, I use anymore is this one particular brand. And um, I just I just really enjoy doing it. I discovered it, it when I was at my lowest point and just the painting is a release. So when you so maybe tell me about a favorite piece that you've um, created and maybe it was during when you were feeling really down. And it was a way, especially you say if it's abstract and lots of colors and, and different shapes, et cetera, maybe you could talk about a piece and how it was helpful to you from a healing perspective. Well, one of them that I did for, for that in particular for healing um, is actually red, mostly reds and uh, on a black canvas. When I get real bad, my mind is just to a point where I don't know if seriously a living is worth it. Um, I generally get a black canvas with a red paint and express myself. Um, this particular one, and I don't have it showing, it's, it's basically on my wall. I looked at it today and went, oh, I need to show that one. Um, it turned, it, it was after a time that something traumatic happened to me and I needed to put that out onto the canvas and it started out looking like flames in a way but then it really ended up 
not being flamed. It was supposed to be extremely an angry piece. So it was just really red. And then it got some pinks in it and it's got some white in it. And then I, I it, for the most part, I put a butterfly as part of my signature up in the right hand corner. And so there's a white butterfly in the right hand corner with these reds touching it. Um, and the butterflies to me are, are basically a, um, a signature of freedom. Uh, so I'm taking this anger that I've got in there and I'm throwing it and giving it kind of to the butterfly to where it can pull it and, and take it away. And then after I got it done, I looked at it and started laughing because it didn't turn out to be the angry expression that I wanted it to be in the beginning. It turns out being more of an actual release, which turned out being a good thing after all. It sounds like uh, it was quite therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is something about red and the fact that you can go from, you know, the palest pink to the fieriest orange red. And mm -hmm. it the emotions in that range are quite, uh, uh, they're dramatic, right? Yeah. I had done one, a lot of times when I'm like that too, I'll do stuff that's very intricate so I can really focus. And I had done one previous to that. It's been many years, yeah. Um, and it's just a lot of red lines on the, on the black canvas. And one of my friends said, you know, it looks like arteries. And I'm like, okay, you know, everybody interprets it. However, I didn't really interpret it any way other than getting out what I needed to get out. And then I went to photograph it and was standing back from it a ways and looked and saw a head design in the middle of it. And that really messed me up. And I had to give the, pit, the painting away because um, that was what I was trying to get away from when I was painting was this particular image. So I was like, mm -mm, can't have it in my house no more, get rid of it. So, uh, but that's what I do is, you know, everything that I, I paint is really expressive of, you know, whatever's going on in my brain at, at that particular moment. So how did you find painting? What drew you to it? Well, I, um, hmm. I ended up in a social group uh, for people with mental health issues. Um, my brother encouraged me, thank goodness. I'm very appreciative of that. And I'm very withdrawn. Uh, I don't want people around me. I don't want to be touched. And so I was having a really hard time even there. And somebody said, oh, there's a, a room that you can, you know, do art in. I was like, okay, let me go in there because there's no one else in there. And picked up a paintbrush and some paint and just started, you know, messing around with it and expressing myself. And I'm like, this is really cool. And so every time I went back, that's what I did. And I just, I really enjoyed it. But I didn't have any at home. I didn't think anything about it. And um, I started... I had to go to classes as well to help me through. And during that time, I was drawing with markers, okay? So a friend of mine saw those, thought they were incredible. Why don't you, you know, what else do you want to do? And I'm like, you know, I really enjoy the painting. And so he provided me uh, with the funding to get an art table, to get my paints and canvases and, and stuff like that. And I sat down and would just paint. Um, and there were quite a few that he'd seen and he's, he's a professional photographer and really enjoyed them. And he's like, when are you going to paint one for me? So, um, that made me feel good. That I had somebody like that. And then I just, I just use it and kept using it. And now it's like, I don't paint as often as I ought to, cause I know it makes me feel good. But when I do paint, that's why I paint. It makes me feel good. Well, you know, there's now quite a bit of research about how any kind of artistic form, it might be dancing, um, painting, music, is really part of a person's healing journey. And, and previous, I think people saw a tie, but now there's actual research that shows mm -hmm. that tie between the two. And do you feel like that's something that you've been able to share with others, it, whether it be in your uh, support group that you were a part of or other artists that you found or other people with mental health challenges? 
Yes, I have shared it um, back in, let's see, I think 2015. Um, I was handed the reins to a nonprofit group called Pierce and Cuga County here in my area and was able to do a lot of different things. Um, and that was one of the things that I would do was go out when they were holding classes and I would go out in, in the common area or whatever and talk about people and their artists, artwork and things like that. I actually uh, taught a few classes showing people, you know, different ways to express themselves that you don't have to be, you know, the kind of artist that people think that everything's so perfect and detailed and whatever, but by just drawing or doodling or any of that kind of thing, you know, to express what you're feeling um, can, you know, share it out. I, also, I had a, what else was it was? A, a, can't say it was a conference, but it was something similar and was talking again about my artwork. Um, and it really impressed a lot of different counselors and different people in the mental health area at that time. And like I said, it's been a few years. Um, and they're like, wow, you know, we need to share that. And if you want to show your, your artwork here and there. Um, so it was, yeah, I, I've been, I've done quite a bit of that and, and using different um, techniques and, and stuff like that. I'd actually taken some online classes to become a uh, art therapist, but not in the sense that, you know, you go to college to become a therapist and all of that, but learning how to show others how to be creative was, was what it is. And, um, and I have books and all kinds of stuff, but I've never gotten very far with it. So yeah, I've, I've shared it quite a bit and, and um, actually almost was quite surprised at the time that there were so many artists in in with the mental health and how wonderful it is so I guess we all got to be a little off <laughs> uh, so to speak to really be be more creative you know I don't think there's any normal quote unquote people that uh I think reach what we do if that makes any sense yeah and I, I think the interesting thing is it taps a very different side of your brain mm -hmm. when you start doing something creative that I don't know for me sometimes I feel like then the part of my brain that wants everything sort of lining up and being just so gets the opportunity to say well maybe it doesn't need to be like that right um for me in, in our reality when I sit down uh, and that's why I even started drawing during my classes it in a way shuts down the real emotional part of my brain and lets the other and the other half does what it needs to do. I would say I have a split brain. Um, so one half is focusing on the artwork and the colors and that kind of thing so that the other half can calm itself down and then I can process whatever has been disturbing me and stuff easier because it seems to take the emotion out of it. Yeah, that uh, that sounds, well, sounds like something we all should tap, right? Yeah, yeah, because it becomes very stress-free. stress, stress -free. And by the time I'm done, I'm feeling better. I process that emotion um, feeling that I was having, and now I can continue on to whatever I need to without feeling all that pressure. Right, and so... The interesting thing, Margaret, is there's is there is, like you said, a much larger community of artists with mental health challenges than uh, maybe we're all aware. There's uh, obviously a lot of people who have challenges, but many uh, from the art community have really identified with the layered onion and found some solace in knowing whether you know people are all over the world. So how how did you find this community? Um, the layered onion in particular. Yeah. Um, let me think. What was I doing to find it? Um, I think I was just looking around for you know artist stuff basically, and and I honestly I don't know exactly how I come across the layered onion. I think I was just like I said doing research, looking around to to find um, a connection with with artists, and this one popped up, and I went through it a little bit, and it says mental health and artists, and I'm like, okay, these are the people that 
uh, should be able to connect with a little bit better than those in some of the other sites that I'd been on. So I stayed. <laughs> so how has it been for you? Have you felt like, um, especially knowing there are people all over the world, has, has that, you know, felt like a welcome community? Um, I can't say yes, only because I don't spend enough time on it to connect. I'm very, like I said, I'm very, very withdrawn. Um, I always feel that anything that I have to say is not right. Anything that I do isn't right. And it's not because anybody on this community has ever said anything like that. I've always been, yeah, I guess I can say I've been welcomed. Anytime that I've put anything out, it's always been positive. But I don't, I don't spend, I don't think I spend enough time to say that I've reached you know, reached the point, reached out to enough people to feel like I belong. And that's on me. It's not on the community itself. But maybe that's one of the the true benefits, Margaret, is when you want to, it's there. Yeah. But if you're not able, you don't have to, right? Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, I think that's one thing we've heard pretty consistently is you can interact and jump in, but when you're having a hard time, nobody's judging you if you kind of, you know, drop off the radar for a while. Right. Yeah. Because everybody's been there for sure. Yeah. So if you had to give some, you know, have you ever had, uh, I generally ask this question is, you know, some of us have a good book or something that, that especially if we're more on the introverted side, that when we're kind of feeling a little like we're looking for friends, but we don't really want to put ourselves out there. We might go back to a comfort book or comfort movie or something. Do you have such a thing, Margaret, that, that you kind of go back to when you're, you know, looking for, you know, they feel like your friends? <laughs> um, I don't know if I have any one particular thing I have, you know, every so often I'll see a title of a book and, and uh, that will, ins- uh, and then I buy it and read it, and that would be my inspiration for for a very long time. Um, and some, uh, sometimes with a movie, I had I had um, collected a bunch of different quotes. I have notebooks full of inspirational stuff. Um, so a lot of times, I just find myself just kind of reflecting and, and losing my own losing everything around me until I can gather. But, you know, some of the books that have helped me with my my art stuff um, are like Show Your Work by Austin, what's his name? Austin Cleon, uh, Ignore Everybody from Hugh McLeod, those kind of things. They help me uh, know that it's okay to be me. You know, it's not necessarily about mental health, but it's about being an artist. And that's what really... Uh, helps me through because I'll look at some of my stuff and go, oh, geez, and then they'll go, well, you know, this is okay. And don't worry about what everybody else says, do your thing. And so those, those kind of books are are what really help me along. Yeah. And probably words of wisdom for sure. So if you were, yeah, yeah. So if you were going to give some words of wisdom to other artists and it sounds like you have through workshops, et cetera, that have mental health challenges. What do you, what are the major things you share with them? Be yourself. Um, there's no perfect anything. Uh, it's okay to look at something and think that you've made a mistake, but don't throw it away. Put it off to the side, look at it tomorrow. Um, you know, don't listen to everybody around you not everybody's going to like what you do. So basically do for yourself, you know, fix it to where you like it and then put it on your own wall because people are people. They're going to like what they like and not like what they don't like. And you don't have to worry about that. Just be you and do you. And I have, I've heard that from a lot of the folks we've interviewed is, is really be true to yourself. And I think that's, it's, it's difficult. It is. I said, I've, I spend time, 
I was, and I've gotten so much better about it, but it was like, okay, I got to tidy this up just so, so when somebody looks at it, they don't see that little tiny mistake. And then I've gotten, you know what? They're not going to know that it's a mistake because it's part of your painting. So you're the only one that sees it as, as a quote unquote mistake. Leave it alone because nobody else is known to know that. So do you think it's taken you a long time to get to that accepting stage mm -hmm. or do you think the painting got you there sooner? It's taken a long time and I can't say that I even um, feel extremely accepted overall anyway, but I do with my paintings. I haven't sold one. I haven't anybody seen them other than right now they're, they're being posted to be sold there at the Layered Onion. Um, my, my boyfriend and friends have seen my stuff because they've been invited in my home, but it doesn't seem like anybody else likes my work. And I've finally decided, um, forget them. It doesn't matter. I like my work. And other than that, I, as a person, because I am so introverted, it, I, I always think people are, well, no, I don't go there either. I'm sorry. I'm talking in circles. Actually, I'd gotten to a point where it's like, screw everybody. You know, I am who I am. If I want to talk out loud, I talk out loud. If I want to dress funny, that's okay too. And if you don't like it and you don't want to listen to it, well, get away from me. So, but it has taken, taken many years to get this far. Well, and Margaret, I think that is, you know, a, uh, it's it is hard. It's hard to get to that place where you can accept yourself enough that you mm -hmm. reflect out and aren't worried about what other people think. And often, as we know, most people aren't really thinking anything, but we think they are. Yes, we do that mind reading thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, it's it, I, I think it sounds like it's been an incredible gift for you to have painting in your life mm -hmm. and helping you process and and bring color and and freedom to your thoughts. Yeah. yeah. And I would encourage everybody to reach out and, you know, even if it's not something that you would normally do, whatever it is that you're feeling, express it, whether it's writing, painting dancing, singing, whatever, um, release, release that emotions. And it does make you feel better, you know, and you need to do it periodically, if not every day. Um, that, that kind of release is, is actually quite amazing. So people that are stuck, you don't have to do it in front of people. You don't even have to do it in front of a mirror, just do it, you know. Um, and eventually, it'll help you get to where you need to be and then stop worrying about other people. So the, I want to circle back to the butterfly that you mm -hmm. put butterflies on your paintings. And you said that often, and maybe I won't remember this correct, that, that the butterfly is, has the opportunity then to take away any of the bad thoughts. Maybe you could say again, what was the yeah. symbolism of the butterfly? Well, I actually adore butterflies um, simply because they're able to be free. You know what I mean? Yeah, the uh, birds get okay. them and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, they, they can just fly, you know, they can fly away. They do their thing. Um, and so for some reason, I don't even know why I started when I started actually started painting. I started putting butterflies on on their as an expression of me. And every so often a butterfly seems, in the one painting especially, seems to be what's taking some of the, the pain out of the, the painting. It's kind of like sucking it up to take it away. Um, but I feel, you know, that I'm, I'm a butterfly. I've, I, I've, you know, I've metamorphosed from this, you know, not particularly cute little caterpillar into something that's fairly more beautiful, uh, fairly more free. Um, to be able to do my own thing. Uh, but I, butterflies are all over my house, basically. Just, you know, it just helps to, rem to remind me that, you know, I am free. I, I 
come from such a horrible background back in 2012 and, you know, beyond my, my childhood, uh, not beyond, but back. And um, so I use this butterfly to help remind me that I'm not there anymore. You know, I'm, I'm here and I have these freedoms. And so putting them on the painting kind of helps me re remember that this painting also is part of my freedom. Well, I think that's a lovely way to end is to think both you are the butterfly and that the butterfly is freedom. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you for joining us today, Margaret. This was a lovely chat. Thank you for joining us today. It is an honor to talk with these amazing creators. You can see and read the artist's work in The Shallot, our journal of mental health, art, and literature, or on our website, thelairdaonion.com. Thank you. Ellipsis.